Hello, Life Group leaders. You are um, about to begin your most difficult life group night, potentially, if you've chosen to do the singleness topic. Um, that may be an overstatement, but I know that for many people, singleness is not just another issue to be dealt with for, through a theological framework, but it's something that's really painful, really frustrating, really misunderstood. And what we see a lot of the time is when we try to give good godly principles on this stuff, people push back and go, oh, you just don't understand. Or I just can't accept that for my life. This is too hard. This is too painful. Yeah, it's nice for you to say that singleness can be uh, a good season and you can be content in it, but you're married now, so it's easy for you to say it and that kind of stuff. Um, and so as you start to dig into this, be aware of a few things. There could well be some people in your group who are very genuinely starting to wonder, am I going to be single forever? And can I cope with that if that's the truth? Can, is God still good? Do I, do I still trust him if he hasn't got marriage in store for me? Or, or if, did he have marriage in store for me and I messed this up? All those kinds of hard questions. There'll be some people with genuine pain around their singleness. There'll be others in your group who are single um, and potentially have been hurt by someone in that process. So they're not feeling hurt by God. They're feeling hurt by the people who've let them down. There could be a little vibe in your group that fell apart. You may not even have noticed it. And so as he's talking about this stuff, be aware that there could be some people who have a bone to pick with others in the group or outside the group, and they're going, I'm single, but that person messed me up. That person, you know, wasted my best years, and now I'm on the shelf because I trusted that guy, or, you know, we, we've got a connection, but these wretched dudes just can't get up off their, um, the seat of their pants and actually do anything about it, and him specifically, uh, you know, needs to, that kind of stuff. So there could well be some awkward dynamic within your group. Um, and then there'll be a bunch of people who, and guys are often in this camp, who kind of think that they're single, and whenever they feel like it, they can sort that out themselves. Um, and so they need to start to understand that singleness is not just a, a random waiting period uh, until they eventually feel like doing something selfless. Um, singleness is a, an important time where you get to set yourself up for what happens in your marriage, where you get to do really important business with God. And so it's not something to be coped with. It's not something to get over as soon as possible. And it's not something to be used as a well, I'm just going to be single because it suits me. Um, all three of those, those thought patterns are unhelpful. And so you're going to be facing that stuff. And the reason I say all of that, and no doubt there are other positions people could be in as well, is because before you start leading this, I need you to really check your own heart, particularly if you're single or if you've been married after having gone through a singleness period, which reflects one of those, those camps. Because as you try and lead this discussion, if you have a lens on singleness, which is that it's something to be coped with, or it's a, an evil thing that you want to get rid of as soon as possible, um, whatever your lens on singleness is, and therefore what your lens on dating is, if you don't know it's there, it's going to color everything that you do as a leader. So this is just a general leadership principle, that when you're starting to deal with something difficult, really examine your heart and find out where you are on it. Did you do your singleness well if you are no longer sing single? Are you doing your singleness well if you are currently single? Why are you not doing it well if you aren't? And be ready to be really vulnerable with your group about that and to be really honest with yourself. Cool. That's the first thing to say. Then as you work through these questions, you'll notice that the first one, if you could say something to all the other singles of the opposite sex in the church, what would you say? Is intended as quite a lighthearted icebreaker. So let it be that way. As the group starts to banter about, well, if I got a little bit of a soapbox, I would tell all the girls to stop taking it so seriously when we ask them out for coffee or whatever, or be hotter or whatever the people want to say. Um, keep it lighthearted and keep it genuine. What you don't want is for one person to start um, really preaching against someone who may be in the group in that moment. There will be a lot of that stuff going on. I wish all guys would do this and it's meant for someone. And to a certain extent, that's okay. But if this gets personal, if this gets nasty, if people start making huge, big theological statements, if pain is starting to emerge, you want to pull it back by saying, hey, we're, we're, we're pretending we're in the church setting here. This is stuff you'd be able to sell off the stage. This has you know, got to be general and generalizable, not specific and nasty. Uh, so try and keep the beginning lighthearted and fun. And it could be a cool opportunity for the girls to help guys get a little bit more self-aware and the guys to help the girls get a little more self-aware. But the whole point is that this should be fun. Okay? So manage the tone at that point. Then your next two questions flow on from each other. What are you hoping your future spouse is doing with their singleness right now? Therefore, what should you be doing with your singleness? What would you like to accomplish in your singleness over the next year? And those are great questions because you want people to start to think of singleness as not a curse to be coped with, but as a time to really use well. Um, and so at this point, you're going to be getting a little more in-depth and a little 
more genuine, and where we want to have people end up, I mean, the ultimate right answer to this question would be that my future wife, right now, in her singleness, if she's finding ways to be more and more satisfied by God, and less and less requiring that one day her future husband is going to satisfy her, I'd be stoked. And therefore, the obvious implication of that is, well, then using my singleness to become more satisfied by God would be a good idea as well. And, and that's what you're wanting to be the end point. But just because you want that to be the end point, don't throw out all the cool, simple, secular answers to start with. So where there's this question that says, what do you want to have accomplished in your time of singleness? It's, you want to push people to be saying, well, I want to learn to play the guitar. Or I want to learn to get my finances in order. Or I want to take advantage of the little bit of extra time that I have as a single to study something and get it under my belt. Or I want to figure out what I'm going to do with the calling and the gifting that I think God has given. So the whole range from practical and secular to spiritual and ultimately I want to learn to be satisfied in Jesus, which is the ultimate answer, all of those are cool and you want all of those answers to come out. Let's not be so super spiritual that this doesn't end up being a fun, practical thing because I get excited about singleness when I hear I can use it to sharpen the saw and grow my skills. Um, and if it's just a spiritual concept, then people are going to struggle to relate to it. Okay? Last thing then, the final question is really where you want people to take the next set of layers off. So they've gotten fairly personal and fairly deep. But what you're doing in the last question when you're saying, if you were to meet Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright right now, what are you trying to have satisfied? What are the needs you need to have met? What's the longing of your heart? What are you hoping that person's going to add to your life? And so what you want to do before you even ask this question is think through deliberately how you're going to shift the tone to the next notch in depth. You want people being more honest and more real. And so here's what I want you to do. Get pads and paper out ready um, and pens for people to write down. And you up front say, right, guys, this next question, I want you to get really honest. And you have the right to be really private about this stuff. You don't need to share what you're about to write down. If you want to share it, that'd be really helpful, but you don't have to. Okay. If you're to meet and fall in love and begin to date Mr. or Mrs. Wright immediately, what are you hoping that they'd add or change in your life? What's the longing of your heart? What's, what, what is it that right now you'd love for that person to just fix or add or improve or change in your life? What's going on in your heart? And in the way you set that question up, you want people to be thinking specifically, man, if there was nothing else this person could do, but just once and for all convince me that I'm beautiful, or once and for all convince me that I'm interesting, or be trusted, but like, you want to get down to that really core cool stuff and force the people to make shortish lists, not long, long, long ones where they just put every potential thing that you hope for in a relationship, but for them to get quite honest with themselves, because then what you get to do, and this is a cool bit, and this isn't going to be a question that they see, but what you're going to finish with, the big hook at the end of life group, is you're going to say, okay, I believe, and you need to have figured out this, you really do believe this, I believe that that thing that you're hoping someone else can meet, I hope that they do that, I really do, but that thing can be met 100%, that thing can be satisfied 100% by our Father in Heaven. Jesus came that you could have life and life in abundance. That means that there is no amount of life that you can't have in your singleness. There's no extra component to life that will be added later. You can have life and have it to the full now. And when you meet someone else, you meet them as a full person, not as someone who still needs to be filled by something that the other person brings. And so what I'd love for you to be able to do is pray for people, specifically into that area where they need to have faith that their God can really meet their needs. So that by the time they do meet Mr. and Mrs. Wright, it's not a half-empty person. So that's the plan, and that's going to be an amazing end if you're prepared to take them there. And so be brave as you move people from that awkward, painful moment into what God can satisfy that. Cool. I know there's a lot in there, but... Uh, we believe that you can do this well. And so that's why the coaching is going to, well, sorry, the intro DVD is going to be just up top. And then you can lead the whole rest of this evening because I think you've got this under control. So enjoy. Good luck.